then one session talking about Docker uh, because it usually takes uh, six hours or five hours to finish Docker and talk about the different things. Uh, but uh, yeah, we start from scratch and um, just for the beginning, it's just concepts. But uh, it's not only information, we actually we hands on these concepts. So we can experience it in real world. And uh, it's a good thing from my point of view. Uh, these uh, sessions uh, could be container concepts, volume image concepts, network concepts. And uh, maybe we we manage to have uh, another session and uh, for sum up or questions or other stuff. Well, I did not decide it yet. But yes. Mm. Container concept. This part we want to talk about how Docker works. What is actually a container and how containers work? Uh, who knows these questions? Or who can explain a little about one of those? For example, Paulo, you can start with how Docker works. How Generally, Docker how, works. yeah. Well, I know at least with a container, at least in, uh, in general, mm -hmm. basically kind of. Uh, let's call it a microsystem where you have uh, a related uh, layer where you can uh, basically then put it on top of uh, the OS mm -hmm. basically and then there's Docker that kind of makes it interactable because then it kind of works as a middleware in order to transfer whatever your, let's say, application uh, has into something that is readable and uh, compatible with yeah. the OS downstairs. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how about you guys? Do you have any idea what is Docker or container? You are familiar, but you don't want to say. I know. <laughs> I know. Ali, uh, do you want to say something? <laughs> Ali, Ali, you're muted. Probably. Oh. Probably. <laughs> let me let me change to a speaker. Um. Yes. Can you speak now to check? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I said that if I start, I will start from the first and go to the end. <laughs> Let me uh, okay, don't no, say no, anything. No, it's good. Oh, uh, actually, uh, Docker. Oh, okay, Docker is a uh, type of virtualization, but uh, uh, in this type of virtualization, uh, we are we have uh, uh, this uh, virtualization in the uh, is in the operating system uh, layer uh, and it provides us to have uh, separate and isolated uh, uh, point of view uh, for the process and uh, our process is a child of uh, parent operating system and uh, it's the root of Docker is LX E and LX C. Uh, this is what can I say?
the chapter at the end to run our uh, comments. That would be the equivalent of a Facebook ad right here. Uh, there is a email address that we use to run our container. So we have container, we have uh, images. Uh, and this, uh, these images are in Docker registry or it could be in our private registry. And uh, yes, images are uh, uh, include of a base image and some comments and nothing more. And uh, from images, we run containers. We will get into that what is actually a container. But uh, yeah, generally, we want to talk generally. So with Docker client, we send our options, our commands to Docker daemon, and it just executed. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, we use Docker build, Docker pull, Docker run, and other stuff. It connects to Docker daemon, and Docker daemon try to pull that image first from Docker registry or our private registry. Then it creates an image. It creates a uh, container related to uh, the comments that we passed. Mm, yes, but uh, as uh, we saw here, uh, client is client. It just connect to Docker daemon, and uh, registry is somewhere to just have different images there. So the main uh, point and the boss is Docker daemon. Who do everything is Docker. You can simply call the APIs instead of using the client to talk to Docker daemon. And yes, so the boss is Docker daemon, so everything in Docker is Docker engine. Docker engine actually is the Docker daemon. Uh, from top, there is a REST interface to talk to Docker engine, and Docker engine should Mm, talk to our operation system, operating system. Mm, to do that, they need some libraries and uh, some middlewares like uh, container D and Ronsi. Uh, the libraries here uh, is uh, lib container D, lib network graph, and other plugins. Uh, you can guess lib container the connect to container the and lib network connect to network to this network itself, creating NAT or these things. Uh, so, what does Docker engine do actually? Connect to container the and proxy. Yeah, so the bus changed. Yeah. Because now we know uh, container D and run C do this stuff to uh, create a container. Why? Because uh, this is the layer uh, which speaks to our operation system. Uh, apart from these things, in operating system, we have namespaces, C groups, layer capabilities, and other stuff, uh, which means uh, container D and run C use these things to create a container. Use namespaces and C groups to create a container for us. But why we use both container D and uh, run C. Anyone know? Any idea? Ali. Ali. 
sorry, can you repeat your question? Yeah. Why we need both container D and run C? Uh, I don't have any idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we are here. Okay. So, we said Docker client connect to daemon, daemon connect to container D, and container D connect to run C. Uh, in the right, as you can see, uh, the, uh, the process. You pass a command uh, on Docker client, for example, Docker build, and it passes it to Docker daemon and container D and shaman run C. Okay. Container D is the main thing that Docker used to create uh, our containers. Uh, when we want to create a container, container D creates the uh, actually specified the namespaces, C groups, the storage, the network layer, and everything related to a container to the container. So uh, the main role of container is creating container. But why we use run C? If the main role for container is to create a container, so why we use run C? Because uh, container D cannot wait for containers and uh, it kind of hands over containers to run C and shim to uh, and then run C and shim uh, uh, watch the container watch the process and if there would be any problem they report it to container D. so uh, with this architecture if we lose our Docker daemon, we don't lose our containers because these containers are connected to Shim and Ronsi. I will show you it later. So, uh, container D create containers and pass it to Ronsi. And for example, if you want to stop a container, it talks to Shim and RunC and pass the stop, restart, or start again to RunC and RunC know what it should do. So this is the whole uh, architecture, but uh, it would be interesting to do some hands-on. I, I really quickly explain it, but uh, because uh, I know hands on and doing stuff is much better. Yeah, you agree? Arman, you are really agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Run see the hard working dude because everything is uh, in Docker related to Run C. We want to do one thing we want to run an uh, Nginx kill the docker daemon and see if it's still there or not if the container is still there or not <sighs> uh, where is my so see it's my vm it's not up. It's up and running. Let me check the VM first. <coughs> yeah, it's restart. Okay. Again, connect.
Okay. Okay. So, Ali, isn't it uh, is it clear to see the or I need to zoom a little? No, yes, yeah, it's, yes, it's, uh, yes, it's good for me. Uh, I will zoom myself. Ah, okay. So I need to zoom. No. Yes, because here, here, yeah, 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 it's here. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. Okay, uh, I'm uh, on my VM. Let's check if something is here. No, it's clear. Load our images. We have Nginx and Alpine. And if I check our process in Linux I see I should see docker daemon somewhere here like this it's uh, open running and it's container D as you can see and uh, if I run uh, container you would see there is a okay there is a container the shim runsy okay but let's see it more clear it ps3 we have our uh, docker daemon here yeah we have container d and we have our docker daemon and uh, we have our nginx content our nginx container under the container the shim so they manage how this uh, the behavior of our container so if we remove uh, run c and shim all, all together to manage the process the lifetime of the container if it needs something uh, they told the container the it needs to restart or they transfer uh, it's a it's a middle between containers and container d run c and shim yeah because uh, we said container d don't want to wait for containers it has other things to do so there should be something to wait for containers and attach to containers to um, transfer these uh, commands between the containers and container d for example you want to a stop a container so this a stop command should be transferred from container d to the container container d is not connected to container but it's connected to run c so it transferred this command to from run c and she to the uh, containers shim, shim. Do that, that, that 
basically their connection? If the name is that like the name between those? Uh, yeah. Okay. I also have a question. Are containers uh, uh, active by themselves, uh, and they can the containers themselves can interpret commands, or uh, is another application, active application, like uh, sh Shim or Ron C, who can interpret commands for them? Interpret commands from container D. Oh, from container yeah. D. Yeah. They so need the this. containers itself or something alive and like a running thread. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That always accepts messages. Yeah. From run C. Yeah. From, from run C. Yeah. We will. Yeah. We will later see it. Uh, yes, we have uh, our engineers here. According to ah, yes, we should run our container and kill Docker daemon and again see if our container is running or not. Okay, so do it. Print Docker run. Dash B and uh, dash dash R. So we have a container here, and let me check something in the configuration. Okay, so we have a up and running container. We can confirm it by Let's do this here. Right curve. One, two. No. Ah, oh, I didn't expose it. Okay. Docker stop. Dash P. Again, kernel. Okay, we have our Nginx running. What is the container daemon PID? It's Docker, Docker D. It's 930. So if we kill 930, it. What's happened? If I kill this. Except from the container things in the operation system. Container are still up. No, no, no. Don't forget about containers. The yeah, is yeah. The I kill the Docker like, daemon process. What's it, what is the expectation? You cannot communicate to now. It's more. it's uh, should be down. Yeah. yeah exactly. So there's no way to. So here, let's do PS3. Yes. So we have our document demon again. What we kill? What is the problem? Is there any problem? No, there isn't any problem. Because our Docker daemon is uh, handled by system D. So system D realized if it's uh, stopped suddenly and it uh, and system D wasn't responsible for that, it tried to restart the Docker daemon again. So we need to uh, run our Docker daemon from command line, not with system D. System D operation system. It's a yeah, it's yeah. a yeah command in operation system to handle process. So I need to 
systemctl stop docker b from systemctl docker dot socket also and uh, start it with docker d dash dash config file slash etc docker daemon dot json so as we can see docker is alive here you can see we can connect to docker and uh, our container is here so docker starts our nginx again so our nginx is up and running let's see again our docker daemon uh where is it docker daemon it should be here yeah our docker daemon pid we want to kill it again kill this bad boy so we shouldn't we can't connect to docker daemon because it's now down if i use ps3 to see the process i see the nginx is here because it's under the container d that shim so i sh it means if i curl the at port i should see the nginx but i can't i don't see it because uh docker daemon is responsible for ip tables and these rules it uh, connects these things together to route the traffic to our container. So if I curl, I don't see anything. But I can see the Nginx is here. Okay. How can I confirm that uh, this is our container? There is a command. Right yeah. Now, what, what is it that still, that's still our running? container? Okay. And Unix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a command uh, which and center, which I tell you later, but right now I want to use it to connect to my container. So I'm on the container. As you can see, there is a Docker entry point on the root. Oh, look, confirm it if it's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I can see <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not magic. I can see it, so. <laughs> ETC, Nginx, and uh, our file. Okay. So I want to show you this is not. I don't have in my operation system any Nginx on their ETC. So it's the real container. Because under ETC I have Nginx. Okay, so our container is running. But Docker daemon is uh, out of service. Here, we run it, we killed it. Daemon shut down. If I run it again i could connect to docker ps and uh, it's uh, still there up three minutes yeah okay any question okay so Question, what is container? From operation system perspective, you saw it. 
I didn't mention exactly, but you saw it. And uh, yeah, what is container? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Process. Container is nothing more than process. It's just process in Linux. And uh, probably you heard if you run databases on containers, you would face performance issue. So what is the difference if it's just the process? It's like you run a um, database process in operation system. Container is like that. So there isn't any performance issue, right? But there is a performance issue. And it's not related to the container concept. It's related to the storage concept of Docker or the network layers. But we can manage it and it's not that much high it's about 30 three no 30 no no not 30 three or four percent performance issue yeah but it's not that much big and we can handle it we can reduce it uh it depends on us okay let's back and continue but wait why 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 what? The, uh, performance issue. So why should you not run databases? Or I mean, why is it slower? They say it's uh, slower on containers. Uh, but as we can see, containers are just a process in Linux. So it doesn't, it, it's, it's nothing to do with containers. It's uh, just uh, about the storage. How container and how Docker um, behave with a storage is it's different with VM. In VM, you can attach your uh, disk yeah. completely and uh, yes, mount it and use it for your database. But uh, in containers, uh, there is a layers. We, we I, I explained it in next session about volumes and storage. Uh, <laughs> there is a yeah, yeah. There is layers in uh, storage, and uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of time consuming for database with uh, high uh, transactions. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, keep it there. We we will yeah we will take it. Okay. Uh, this is the whole thing we talk about. There is a Docker or Docker Compose, doesn't matter. There is a Docker D uh, to manage these things. There is Container D to uh, manage our uh, containers, create them, manage network, start container. Uh, yes, and uh, we have Container D shim to abstract low level runtimes. Uh, shim lives as long as a container process. It's like a four. There is a loop in there. Uh, it's it's really simple. The codes when you look at the code, it's really simple. Uh, yeah, and it intercepts containers with CD in, a CD out, uh, logs and different things, uh, and uh, handle the Docker attach. You can attach a network or uh, volumes on a content on a running container. So Shim should do that because it's running and container D doesn't have anything to do with that. And then we have uh, containers, regular Linux process. They can outlive Docker the daemon. They see a virtualized OS around them for network and services and other stuff. Okay. Uh, to have this feature that uh, kill Docker daemon and uh, your container is be still there, you need to add uh, an option 
to your uh, Docker and it's uh, this option library sort through which library sort through if you kill docker daemon your container is still there if you restart the docker daemon your container is safe and they don't restart so it's an important thing at, uh, at least in production next what is container we already talked about it but but always there is a but containers are uh, mixed of namespaces and uh, namespaces mixed of namespaces singular yeah as you can see in the uh, right we have yeah <laughs> well, I see. Uh, we have different type of uh, uh, namespaces net ipc c group mount pid users and utc and we can create them with clone zns unsure and iocTL from os perspective but uh, how we when we say what is container, we should say it's a process in Linux, which is isolated by namespaces. Uh, how we say uh, uh, mm, you saw, I, I, yeah, uh, you know, I think you should know that uh, different container we create different container because uh, we don't want to mess mess with our operation system or do do something wrong in it or if we did something wrong we can easily uh, delete it and again run it so and these things uh, happen with namespaces because uh, with those things we can isolate a process so you can do everything with this process without any effect on the operation system uh, so we use all these things to isolate our process our processes our containers and our container run our image and our image can be nginx can be a database so our database is an isolated process uh, from other process or from operation system which is kind of process uh, in this uh, name spaces we have C group which is a sign kind of controller group and uh, we have C group version 1 and version 2 it doesn't matter the differences between them I just wanted to mention it here but uh, the main responsibility of C group is uh, allocate CPU memory and these things to containers to limit them because uh, if you run a container without limitation and if you run something multiple for multiple loop in it it will get the whole memory of the operation system so it's not a good thing it's a security issue actually because we want to isolate it so we have c group to do that it can uh, yeah kind of handle our storage io memory the maximum PIDs, open files we can use in our container. Uh, this is enough about C group. And uh, back to namespaces, we have uh, network namespaces, which isolate our network, the connections between containers, giving, uh, give the, uh, give yeah, give the containers their own network, like like a loopback, but related to just for that containers. 
uh, it can be connected to our operation system or other containers, but generally it's isolated. We have uh, IPC interprocess communication, it's OS thing, doesn't matter. We have mount, which can isolate our mounting containers. Uh, we have PID, it doesn't matter that much for us because it creates uh, another set of PID. If you run, if you, mm, let's see, if you, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, we can separate it. Yeah. And uh, where is it? If you run an operation system, it a sort of count from one, the PIDs from one. And always the PID one is uh, in it or system D or something. It's one, two, three, four. So if you isolate your container, the PID is sort from one, two, three. It doesn't matter if the operation system is on the Mm, which number of PID. So it's kind of isolating this and in some application it's important. We can isolate users in container because if we don't, the actual uh, root or any user in our operation system would be the user in container. So it's not a good thing. You can do everything. Uh, and uh, we have UTS, which is uh, time sharing, but it's not about time, it's about domain, host name, or these things. We will see it with example. How container works. Follow this part in document. Yeah. I will share it, this document if you want. We should see it. Yeah, how much time? Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. How we can create a container without uh, without Docker or Container D. We said container as are just set of namespaces. So if we can create different namespaces, it's actually a container. Yeah. So we said we can use different tools to create namespaces. As you can see here, yeah, there is clone, setNS, unshare, and IOCTL. Each one for different purpose. But here, we want to use uh, unshare. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> unshare. With dash u, we change, we isolate the UTS, which is related to domain, host name, and these things. And if I use this, I run a process, a bash process uh, with uh, UTS isolation. But I want to show something else. LSNS. We know LS, it just lists files, but LSNS lists namespaces. So we can see our system, which is in it, the PID number one, the operation system, has uh, this uh, type of namespaces, MNT, IPC, UTS, user, PID, and C group, everything, every namespaces. And different process can uh, inherit or create a new namespace for themselves. For example, our Nginx, which uh, is a container, 
as you can see here, uh, has a MNT, UTC, IPC, PID, and net namespaces without user namespace. For so, uh, Docker daemon by default do not isolate user namespace because it might be some storage problem. But uh, in production, we usually I I didn't see it in uh, Walter group. And I suggest do that, <laughs> but we usually should see in production they uh, isolate the user too. It's important. But when you have, I mean, I'm trying here. I have almost the same rule, but with me it's the user, not me. Because you are seeing, we are, we are, you are not root. You are, yeah, you are your user. You are, yeah. You should you can't see the root. Things you can and see your thing as a, a regular user, yes. So, common line you don't yeah. see root as root, but your user, yeah. If you yeah. saw the LSNS, you would see this. You basically yeah. access as root, then you would see all, yeah. Those functions. And you try, and of course, yeah, same thing. Oh, yeah, 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 same for the root, yeah, yeah. Because you are not root, you are a regular user, so you can just see your process on your main space. Yeah. Okay. We want to create a container. Unsure to isolate uh, UTS in the bash. I have a question. What is the command above doing that? Ls slash proc slash self slash ls is it? No, it's same. No, it's no, no. Missing no. your personal namespaces or yeah, yeah. It's uh, you can not here. It's my Docker demon. Yeah. Here you can see the namespaces with their IDs in front and here you can check those. So it's the same namespaces but just formatted differently or like yeah, more yeah. information. Everything in uh, uh, Linux is a file as you, as you may know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, slash proc is a window to kernel. Everything happened in kernel Everything can be modified. You can see it in a slash proc. Mm -hmm. okay. So right. the name spaces are, yeah, okay. are there, like as any other files. Okay, thanks. Like socket or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a bash. If I ps slash aux, what would I see? What should I see? <laughs> Difficult question. What I should I see everything. Why? Because I just uh, isolate the UTS, nothing more, okay? But if here I use LS, uh, not here, because I should go to this. If I use LSNS, I should see there is a bash with UTS isolation. So it means if I change the host name to sample, I should see it as we can see. And if I exit from this container and exit bash, I just see the Ubuntu as a host name, okay? But if I don't use dash u to isolate the host name, and if I change the host name to sample, if I reload the bash, if I exit and reload the bash, I will see the sample because I didn't isolate it. 
So that's the one sample for isolating uh, hostname domains. It, it really works, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't expect it. <laughs> so this is that when we change stuff in our Docker image, it doesn't yeah, change anything. It doesn't change yeah. anything in our operation system. So we can isolate our user. So if I create it, uh, my user would be nobody. Yeah. If I install Nginx, it permission denied. I can't install it because I'm nobody. I don't have this permission. But uh, here we have. Uh, our bash with user isolation and the PID is this. If I go to a slash proc and this PID, I should see different things and uh, one of them is uh, the namespace. And uh, Can you zoom in a bit? Huh? Can you zoom yeah. in a bit? And uh, yes. But under the PID, which is related to my bash, there is different things, which we talk about it in the next sessions. But uh, which uh, what I want to mention here is a UID uh, map. If I cut this file, you would see nothing. But I can do something. I can map my root to container, the root of operation system to container, by doing these simple things. Actually, everything we do here, like echo to this PID, it would be done by container D and this stuff. But we want to be more friendly. So. I map my uh, root, which the PID is zero, to uh, 1000 PID, but uh, it's not PID, it's UID. And uh, let's see the UID, the user ID 1000 is Ubuntu. Yeah. It's Ubuntu. So we, we map root to Ubuntu under this PID. Copy the PID here. And the code. So if I cat, there is something here. And here, if I again ID, I would see nothing. <laughs> Why? Exit. Without isolation. Again, LSNS. You don't have any isolation, that's right. What? Nobody. Still. Should see the root here, but I can't see. Okay. Mm. 
know something is wrong. Okay, good part. Hmm. Okay, we don't do that. So we just simply exit create this. Yes, sixteen. Six, maybe. Okay, forget about it. But let me give it one more shot. Maybe I do something wrong. Yeah, okay. So the, this yeah, okay. yeah, it was uh, fine. So, our, uh, we have our Ubuntu here. As a, as a user of Ubuntu. And uh, if, yeah, if we run at install Linux, now we can't because we are Ubuntu and the normal user of Ubuntu cannot install anything. We should so do, and uh, so it should be zero. But you cannot overwrite it for the second time. You should delete the yeah, container and re recreate it again. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, another. We have, do you have time? Because we'll start later. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. So, maybe that's enough. We can talk about later. If we lost our Docker daemon, how to connect to the container without Docker daemon. Uh, or if you don't have uh, for example, if config or these commands net set on your container, you don't need to install those. You can trans transfer your command from OS to container. So let's uh, yeah, let's try. If I do this, I have a Nginx, okay. Do I have if config? No, I don't have if config. But LSNS, Nginx, PID, copy, paste. If I create a symbolic link to the network of this Nginx. And then I use this command with if config, I would see the results of the container. Yeah? Because my if config is something really, really more. But inside the container, you can do that. That's the magic. <laughs> what is the command? I see. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't want to show it. <laughs> no, it's uh, IP net 
SNS, that's namespace, mm -hmm. exec con inside this container, oh, which okay. is, should be similar to this, mm -hmm. this command, which is exist in your operation system or anything, or if config related to network, root mm -hmm. dash n e or this things. Okay. Notice that, yeah. So it's calling this last command in the container we just mapped it to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It just, yeah, transfer our command to mm -hmm. the container. What and is the IP doing? Is what does the, does the first thing, the IP and net NS? IP net NS, yeah. What is this doing? It's a, it's a command to communicate between uh, networks. And it's, it do everything, okay. actually. Okay. You can show uh your uh ips like what uh, if config do you okay. can add root with root actually add root ip root add or something mm -hmm. okay. and everything yeah it's a network and there is another command the last command in this session everyone pay attention <laughs> like the one with you <laughs> Uh, it's end center, which connect to your uh, container, as you saw. End center dash eighty fifteen zero and execute bash, and you can access your container. There is an IP address, IP command. There is SS uh, PS. Come on, okay, doesn't matter. But yeah, it's it's in your container now. And uh, the point is, if your container run as a, for example, Jenkins run as a different user Jenkins, and if you connect it this way. You can connect to the root. You don't need the root password. You don't need the Jenkins. You straight connect to the root. So it's a tricky way. Oh, you can do that only if you are root on, on the your machine, right? Right. Root on the machine, and you are on the host. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. We already Bye. finished. So that's it. Any question? <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Ah, you write it. Yeah. What's the question? Mm -hmm. oh. No, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've never did anything manually with Docker. I always with a high level client myself. So seeing what it's doing underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Don't forget to fix the document before you share it with us. If you switch the commands uh -huh. in the in the document, uh -huh, don't forget, uh -huh, yes. don't forget yeah. to fix it before you yeah. send it to me because no, I, I will not figure it out myself. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. will be stuck. No, yes. no, no. I will. Uh, yeah, I don't send this because it need, it needs uh, some changes. Yeah, uh, I will do it with more explanation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's better. So it's finished for this session. We will continue because we have more things to talk. I feel like we started with some really high level question like what is Docker what and is we ended up to <laughs> <laughs> this. Yeah, so yeah, you you now know what is Docker, what is container exactly. You yeah. I think you can't see it these things on any course in internet or something. I rarely saw. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, but uh, it's a good knowledge to have and mess with other people <laughs> and challenge their knowledge. Yeah. And if they say content databases running slow on container now you know how to respond yeah. it's not an operational issue <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank no question. You. No question. Yeah. Okay. Good. What are What is the next session about? Uh, already decided. Volume and uh, network concept. Mm -hmm. Is storage actually like storage and network concept? Okay. Yeah. Yes, so, you. Ali, if you are watching us, show is <laughs> over. <laughs> Wait, no, there isn't. Ali told me right, uh, be right back. Okay. It's finished. We didn't record it here, but I record it on my recorder, and I hope it works fine.